before you mute yourself, mute yourself, just give me a heads up. You can see and hear the presentation. All good, Doctor. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Jazakallah khair, everyone, for uh, tuning in on a Friday uh, night. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, my name is Adil Haq. I've had the pleasure, honor, privilege of being with Dar es Salaam for almost a decade now. Uh, it's truly a blessing to be part of the larger Dar es Salaam family. And I can't wait to uh, meet most of you uh, inshallah, in 20 or so days. So I'll try to keep my presentation uh, fairly brief. It will be, uh, you know, to the point. I uh, do want to recognize Dr. Zieger. Uh, he's not logged on the presentation, but we both did the PowerPoint presentation several years ago, and we make changes every year. And inshallah, you'll have the honor of uh, meeting Dr. Amir as well. So inshallah, we'll get started. First off, just a few uh, housekeeping rules. Whatever I uh, present tonight is my advice based on several years of Hajj and Umrah experience. Uh, you know, I can't give individual advice in this format. So it is extremely important uh, that all the hujjaj have already seen their primary care doctors, their specialists, and have a plan on how to address their healthcare needs if they have any chronic medical conditions. Individual situations may vary, so it's very important that uh, everybody speaks to their uh, primary care docs back home before embarking on this journey. I also want to respectfully just point out to any fellow physicians who may be listening to me uh, tonight that practice of medicine during Hajj, especially during the Manasik, is not what I would consider textbook medicine. Uh, Dr. Amir and my goal over there is to uh, ensure and give the best probability uh, of all the hujjaj maintaining their well-being, being healthy, so they can have an optimal uh, day at Arafat. So some of the advice tonight, some of the advice recommendations that we may make at a hajj may not be what would be considered textbook medicine, but just wanted to give that a uh, disclaimer. Brothers and sisters, it's only a miracle that more people don't get more seriously ill during Hajj and Umrah days. It's only Allah's mercy that you are close to face-to-face, -to -face, no concept of personal space, uh, with literally a couple, three million people, and most of us will just walk away with a little bit of cough, sniffles, it's very important that we continue to make dua uh, for our well-being, for our family's well-being, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us uh, safe and healthy uh, during this trip. Needless to say, any illness that we uh, experience at Hajj is part of the Hajj experience. It's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, inshallah, we'll get through it together. Uh, Top 10 pointer, a top 10 list for a pleasant experience. Just wanted to start off with that. I can't stress the importance of uh, good hygiene. Alhamdulillah, we seem to be over the pandemic. However, the good habits that we learned from 20, uh, 2022 onwards, or 2020 to 2022 during the COVID pandemic, you know, we should really utilize those uh, good habits, washing our hands, using a hand sanitizer uh, very often. I would also recommend having a small prayer rug, uh, not a full-size prayer rug, but they have these, uh, what I call pediatric size prayer rugs just for the forehead and the face. So when we are in the haram, uh, we can at least have a clean surface in which our uh, forehead and nose uh, is touching. Patience goes a long way, not only for Hajj, but our psychological well-being, which is also very important at Hajj, need to have a positive mindset. 
I think if we all accept that we will experience some sort of uh, sickness, it will help us. Uh, there's a running joke that, you know, if you don't get sick, your Hajj maybe wasn't accepted. Obviously, this is a joke. Uh, please don't take it seriously. But we all will get some sort of Hajjitis, uh, cough, runny nose, whatever uh, you may have. Please, for those of us who take any chronic medications, make sure you keep them in a safe place. Even the medications that you will be bringing in case you need them, uh, please keep them protected. Planning is very important. I would start eating, uh, you know, I call it eat right and eat light, especially during the days of Manasik. Can't stress the importance of fluids, fluids and fluids, and we'll talk more about it. And then obviously try to get rest and sleep as much as possible. Brothers and sisters, we only have, I think, 17, 18 days before most of us will be getting on an airplane. It is my sincere uh, hope that all of us have started our exercise regimen, our uh, increase in our activity level. Uh, we all should be walking every day. Uh, we should be getting used to walking, exerting ourselves in the sun because Surprise, surprise, it's going to be hot and it's going to be sunny down there. I always recommend every year, uh, especially for the brothers, uh, whatever shoes, sandals you will be utilizing during the monastic days, please start uh, walking uh, in them now. Every year we have a few brothers and sisters who open up a brand new pair of shoes, sandals, whatever you may have. And then they realize it's rubbing the wrong way, it's causing irritation, friction, and they end up with blisters. So please, whatever uh, shoe, sandal you'll be wearing, start wearing and walking in it now. <clears throat> now is as good a time to improve our diet, try to have a healthy diet, try to get our rest so our immune system is as uh, good as possible. For those of us who smoke, uh, best time to quit smoking, I would highly recommend talking to your primary care doctor to wean off it. For those, those of us who like our caffeine, coffee, uh, you know, it's available over there, but as most of us know, uh, caffeine or coffee uh, is a diuretic. And if we all can reduce the amount of our intake starting now, I think it will be beneficial. Uh, Dar es Salaam, uh, you know, and all the group leaders will be providing and they have provided a recommended packing list, what all to bring. But I just thought I'll mention it here that most of us will overpack. Most of us will bring more stuff than we really need. So be uh, cognizant of that fact. Once again, a reminder, if you have not seen your primary care doctor, please uh, make an appointment for Monday. We all should be getting a general health check. We all should make sure that, you know, we know what medical conditions we have, maybe have a index card or some sort of a summarized version. So, you know, if something were to happen down there, it's easy for any physician who's going to help you to have an idea what they're dealing with. Very important. Uh, we all have good oral hygiene, but it's not a bad idea to see a dentist before such a trip just to make sure there's no uh, smoldering dental infection cavity, which may act up uh, during the two weeks that we will be there. Please have a current medication list. Another reminder, this has been brought up many times uh, in the WhatsApp groups, wheelchairs for those of us who will be needing it, uh, please make arrangements now. Alhamdulillah, the only uh, vaccine that is required is meningitis. We all need to ensure that we get our meningitis vaccine at least 10 days before entering Saudi Arabia. Simplify, if you have not gotten your vaccine, you need to get your meningitis shot ASAP. This is a copy and paste from the Hajj Ministry's health guidelines. And I just wanted to point out that uh, there are two types of meningitis vaccines, a polysaccharide and a conjugate. 
according to the Saudi Hajj ministry, uh, depending on which one you get, the duration of expiration is different. So please make sure that your vaccine card uh, shows the type of vaccine you got and clearly uh, shows what the date of the administration was. A general overview of the supplies that if we need these things, if we have these conditions, we should be thinking about a glucometer, a blood pressure machine for those of us who have diabetes, high blood pressure, folks who may have asthma, COPD, or allergies, which cause issues uh, in breathing. I would recommend bringing inhalers. If you use the nebulizer at home, I would try to get a portable nebulizer, which works just as fine. Anybody with sleep apnea should talk to their pulmonologist to see if they need to take a CPAP machine with them. It is, uh, you know, you can use it, especially in your hotel rooms uh, with the proper uh, adapter converter. So keep that in mind. Anybody who wears glasses, prescription uh, lenses, please make it a point to bring an extra pair because you don't want to break a pair of glasses and then essentially remainder of the trip you can't see uh, ideally. Once again, wheelchair, uh, whatever arrangement we will be doing for it, keep that in mind. A simple first aid kit, you know, simple band-aids, uh, maybe some gauze, compression stockings for those of us who get leg swelling, this has been brought up many times before uh, by Brother Azar in his presentations, hydration products, uh, oral hydration salts. There's a million types out there on the market. You know, just do your due diligence, do some research, and just make sure you have enough of it for the days of Manasik. Uh, some sort of snacks. Uh, I always take protein bars for myself. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about it, how I utilize it. Uh, face masks, I highly recommend them. Based on the rules, guidelines, uh, for, uh, you know, during an ihram, the general uh, consensus is that a fa face mask is not allowed. However, folks who may have a some sort of an immune uh, deficiency condition, they can talk to their imam uh, guide for any concessions allowed. But once we are out of ihram, uh, I would highly recommend wearing a face mask, at least while we're in the haram. Hand sanitizer, Kleenex, uh, so on and so forth. You know, for those of us who take blood pressure medicines, cholesterol medications, diabetes, any chronic medical condition, please make sure you bring enough supply of your medications. This way you don't have to go through the you know, have to go through the Saudi pharmacy trying to find uh, the same medication, the generic name, brand names may be different, just simplify our trip. Uh, I always recommend this to my own family. Anytime we're going on a trip, a trip, much less a trip like a Hajj is not the time to try any new medications. So please keep that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna give a list of medications uh, I'll try to post this on the various WhatsApp groups as well, but just to give an overview, we should all have some sort of Pepto-Bismol Tums for stomach indigestion. Uh, if we have a history of gastritis, ulcer disease, GERD, some sort of Pepsid, Anacid, Prilosec may be a good idea. You gotta bring some Imodium as diarrhea does happen and Ciproflagyl, maybe a couple antibiotics for the GI system and then for uh, nausea and vomiting, any anti-emetic, but the most common that you probably have heard is Zofran. For the respiratory system, cough, cold, congestion, uh, you know, any over-the-counter aids such as Mucinex, Sudafed, Tylenol cold, uh, allergy medications for nasal uh, symptoms such as Claritin, Zyrtec, Allegra. Some of these are prescription medications. If you use them in the U.S., you should use them in Saudi also, so bring those with you. Inhalers, whether it's a bronchodilator like an albuterol uh, inhaler, puffer, 
or inhaled corticosteroids would strongly recommend bringing those if you are on them. Cough drops, uh, you know, most people do get some sort of a sore throat, uh, throat irritation, even if it's not an infection, it could be allergies. So any sort of uh, chloroseptic throat spray for pain, symptomatic relief would be a good idea. And then I, I threw, you know, quite a bit of other stuff on here. This may not apply to all of us, but I'll still mention it. Uh, any sort of antifungal cream, Tylenol, Motrin, uh, steroids, uh, prednisone, 20 milligrams, uh, any sort of triple uh, ointment antibiotic for any cuts, wounds, scratches. Uh, the brothers, we have to have some sort of Vaseline or petroleum jelly product to prevent uh, really an uncomfortable condition, which I'll be talking about uh, later. Uh, some sort of anti chafing cream for those of us who wear contacts, uh, some sort of allergy drops for the eyes, uh, antibiotic eye drops uh, for those of us who get motion sickness, maybe some sort of a Dramamine patch tablet. Once again, this is something you need to talk to your doctor. And, and I think starting now, we should all be taking some sort of an airborne immune booster supplement just to, you know, get our immune system as optimal as possible to, to get ready for this uh, trip, inshallah. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, I can probably uh, say this with quite a bit of certainty that you probably will get sick and tired of me, uh, Dr. Amir, your group leaders reminding you to make sure you stay hydrated, you stay on top of your hydration. It's going to be hot. Uh, last Arafa, I, I had the honor, the privilege of being there. It was 48 or so degrees. Uh, people sweat a lot. You get dehydrated. And before you know it, people pass out if they are not staying on top of this. If you don't take anything out of my presentation, please take some notes, some mental notes that hydration, hydration has to be as important as anything else in your Hajj uh, preparation, especially when we're during the five days, six days of the Manasik. We have to, we have to stay hydrated. Uh, there is a plethora of products out there. Um, you know, just talk to your local pharmacist and just you know, bring enough for you. If you're traveling as a couple, bring enough for the couple. If you have family, bring enough and, you know, earn some extra ajar and just bring some extras for the fellow who judge. Antibiotics. This is a question that we got asked every, uh, every year, what to bring. Before I go over the list, uh, some of us may not be aware, but pre-COVID, Actually, they started in 2019, I believe. Saudi pharmacies, uh, you cannot get a prescription without a prescription paper. I'm sorry, you can't get an antibiotic without a prescription. Uh, so I always recommend, uh, and I do this for myself, You know, I don't wanna go see a doctor just to get a prescription for an antibiotic. So I bring my own a supply of antibiotics that I may need. Please, I urge everybody listening and everybody who's planning on coming for a Hajj to bring these antibiotics for yourself, for your family, and if at all possible, just bring a few extra doses so somebody may benefit from it. You may make someone's Hajj easier and may Allah SWT reward you for it. Zithromax, also known as z -Pak, Cipro, uh, for traveler's diarrhea, flagell, augmentin. Believe it or not, I was there in uh, spring break and one of our uh, friends had classic symptoms of influenza. We didn't test him for it, but I did make the executive decision to treat him with Tamiflu and Alhamdulillah, it got better. 
So I do bring Tamiflu with me every time I uh, go to Umrah or Hajj. We, we get this question asked every time, a couple of days before our day of Arafat, we don't recommend prophylactic antibiotics. Uh, it's not recommended in, in UK, Australia, uh, England, uh, Canada, uh, US. As a general rule, there may be somebody out there who has a condition and they are recommended by their primary care doctor to start it. That's their decision. But as a general rule, we don't recommend prophylactic use or just starting it before Hajj. Excuse me. Once again, very important to protect our medications, just like our valuables. Uh, do not check your medications in your checked in luggage. It should be in your carry on luggage. <clears throat> you know, most of us will be traveling good number of hours. Uh, very important to uh, get some rest on the plane. Some of us will be landing in Jeddah, heading to Makkah to do our Umrah. So if we can be well rested before that, it will be beneficial. <clears throat> the Hujaj going to Medina, it may not be as important for them. But, you know, just, just get in that mindset while you're on the plane. Patience, uh, positivity, helping others, uh, selflessness, all these things. If we can all implement this in our lives starting now, inshallah, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our hajj easier. There may be people out there who have some risk factors for blood clots. It's very important that they talk to their primary care physician. Should they be on any medications? This is a very uh, individualistic uh, scenario. So if you have any risk factors for blood clots, if you've had them before, do consult with your primary care physician. And for the record, this is a pretty serious topic. I clearly remember in uh, 2018, when we were in Mina, we had a young brother who had acute onset of right leg swelling and it was a blood clot we had to kind of in the middle of the night go to the pharmacy and get him on some sort of anticoagulation so you know it's very important that we we do whatever we can to prevent complications like this so it's very important to wear loose baggy clothing during the flight periodically get up and walk around the cabin to get the blood circulating in the legs Stay hydrated. Let's talk about five, six categories of illnesses that we traditionally see every year during Hajj. Briefly mentioned earlier, respiratory illnesses, bugs, just, you know, we just have to think about from this perspective, Hujaj are coming from all over the world. Um, you know, hygiene standards are variable all over the world. There is no sense of personal space. We are literally in everybody's face, close proximity. Uh, you're tired. You're not getting your eight hours of sleep. Uh, you want to keep on going. You want to pray. You want to do as much ibadah as possible. Lack of sleep. All these factors put us at risk for getting some sort of a respiratory bug. It lowers our immunity. We cannot fight the infection as well if we were well rested, well slept, etc. So, I mean, like I said, I've said this a couple of times already tonight, expect to get some sort of a respiratory bug. Uh, you know, these infections are commonly viral in nature, some sort of a flu-like illness. This slide changes, uh, actually it's different from last year. Last year we were talking about COVID. Uh, I think COVID is still you know, around, but alhamdulillah, is just causing viral illnesses, uh, respiratory illnesses for most of us. As mentioned earlier, uh, in the previous slide, most of the upper respiratory infections are viral. They don't always require antibiotic. Uh, this is one of those textbook medicine versus what you do at Hajj. If somebody gets a bug a day before Arafah, most likely I will recommend Try an antibiotic. It won't hurt anything. It may, you know, make your Arafah day a bit better. 
we will be there. Dr. Uh, Amir is there. I'm there. We will have other uh, physicians, volunteer physicians from the Hujaj. Uh, so we'll, we'll have plenty of resources to give you a recommendation what to do. Just don't wait for the illness to progress. Just let us know what you're feeling, how you're feeling, and we'll give our uh, our opinion on how to tackle it. I'm going to go through this slide. It's basically symptomatic treatment, uh, antibiotics if needed. A lot of times these symptoms are also from allergies. So local honey, hot tea with lemon goes a long way for the symptomatic relief. Uh, good hygiene will, inshallah, prevent most of us from getting any kind of a bug of this sort or will delay us getting the bug, inshallah, after Hajj. Once again, I uh, talked earlier about wearing a fa face mask. Uh, not in a haram, unless you have a condition, talk to your imam. <clears throat> uh, heat exhaustion is a real uh, concern. Uh, a lot of hujjaj in our group will get some sort of a heat-related illness. Um, heat illnesses are on a spectrum from heat exhaustion all the way to heat stroke. Our job as physicians over there is to remind you that even if you get a mild heat-related illness, it doesn't progress to a full-blown heat stroke, which is a true emergency. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best treatment for heat exhaustion is to rest and get out of the sun, get out of the heat, try to go somewhere where there is AC or at least some cool air circulating. May need fluids. Uh, you know, in most of the uh, countries where we will be coming from, heat exhaustion most likely gets you an admission to the hospital. However, in Saudi, it's not happening. You just get out of the heat, uh, get some fluids, and try to hydrate. Heat stroke, uh, I'll just fly through this. It's truly an emergency. And inshallah, if the physicians, our group leaders, do our job, we will ensure that all the hujaj stay hydrated, stay out of the sun for an extended amount of time, and we all stay safe, inshallah. <clears throat> Food poisoning, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, pretty common. It's one of the most common things uh, we see out there. You know, it could be as simple as just feeling some indigestion, throwing up, or diarrhea. Once again, this is more of an oral fecal transmission. Uh, bad hygiene can lead to this. Strongly recommend eating, you know, not undercooked stuff. Uh, but alhamdulillah, all of the hotel food, uh, the catering that is uh, provided in the monastic, uh, during the monastic days is, uh, you know, good quality, good standard. And most of us won't really uh, be at risk for eating something that is not of good uh, cleanliness, properly cooked would recommend not eating food from the street vendors. Uh, you know, just good hygiene, washing our hands uh, before, after eating. If we're going to eat any kind of fruit, it's probably better to eat something which is with peels, uh, bananas, oranges, uh, so on and so forth. A lot of this is common sense, and I'm just trying to go over it and remind. Obviously, everybody uses bottled water over there. Diarrhea prevention, once again, you know, just watching what we eat, uh, having a good hygiene, and avoiding street vendors. How do you treat it? Well, you know, you just treat the symptoms and you want to hydrate yourself. Uh, the oral hydration salts, uh, the Gatorade packets, whatever you will bring with you will help you get hydrated. And then something called a brat diet just to kind of get the GI system some sort of a rest. Obviously, uh, I have a pretty low uh, threshold of putting people on Zofran, Imodium, 
ciproflagell if these symptoms uh, become an issue over there. <clears throat> Blisters, I had mentioned this on the first or a couple of slides, I think, you know, number one reason is people trying on a shoe in Saudi Arabia that they bought for Hajj but never tried back home. Irritation, friction between the toes, on the heels, uh, consistent rubbing against the leather of the shoe can cause skin breakage, blisters, and they can be pretty comfortable every year we have to drain a few of those so if we can take measures to prevent it it's probably for the better uh comfortable footwear uh you know i wrote here must not be brand new meaning you've walked in it back uh, at home uh <clears throat> once we are out of a haram i highly recommend even men to wear socks in the haramain uh, so your feet are protected from skin breakage. If a blister does occur, you can use a Band-Aid or some sort of an adhesive plaster. And like I said, we do drain large blisters. Heel cracks, a uh, similar concept, uh, can make walking a bit difficult. So I would recommend, once again, making sure you have some sort of a com comfortable foot footwear and wear socks when possible. <clears throat> Uh, some prevention can use some sort of a topical antibiotic ointment, a petroleum jelly, a Vaseline to also prevent uh, heels from cracking. Swollen feet uh, from the long flight, uh, traveling, change in diet, maybe having too much salt intake is a real, uh, real issue. So once again, you know, prevention is the best key. Elevate your feet as much as possible. Uh, you'll be walking much more than what you more, than most of us are used to back home. So just gravity, circulation. Try to elevate your feet as much possible. Walk in the cabin when you're flying to Saudi Arabia. Avoid really tight-fitting socks, which uh, prevents good blood flow. Almost every year, we get requests for diuretics or water pills. Uh, as a general rule, we don't recommend that simply because it can mess up your elect electrolyte balance. And uh, depending on when you take it, it will act as a diuretic, meaning you will have to urinate a lot, which probably isn't the best thing during the Hajj days. With that said, some cardiac patients, uh, patients with heart conditions, uh, may be on a water pill and they may want to consult their primary care doctor, their cardiologist before leaving how to adjust those doses. Uh, groin irritation, fungal infection, uh, you know, it can happen in sisters as well, but this slide is really for brothers. When we are in a haram, we are not wearing underwear, which we <clears throat> wear on a daily basis. So the excessive long walking in the hot uh, environment and skin rubbing against skin can cause a lot of irritation and skin can actually break down. And this is a really uncomfortable uh, condition to have. It's very important uh, and, you know, We'll try to remind this as much as possible to apply Vaseline or some sort of anti chafing cream when we are getting into Ihram to prevent this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, allergies are an issue in Saudi. You are in a desert. Uh, dust, dryness, exposure to the bright sun can cause dry eyes. Uh, sunglasses go a long way. It's allowed in ihram uh, for those of us who wear contacts you may want to consider not wearing contacts and instead using eyeglasses and some sort of uh, eye moisturizing drops uh, may be beneficial a couple of pointers about the hujaj who may have diabetes it's very important that you control get a good handle on your blood glucose control before leaving for hajj Stick to a good diabetic diet. Uh, 
be aware of symptoms of low sugar and don't wait for your sugar to get too low. That's where the snacks will come in handy. <clears throat> you know, it may be hours uh, during immigration, during uh, going from Jeddah airport to Mecca, you may not always have access to food. So I always make sure, especially the diabetic patients, but as a general rule, all of us should have some sort of a protein bar um, snacks in our backpacks at all times. <clears throat> uh, if you are prone to having your blood glucose drop, maybe having some sort of a oral glucose solution uh, may be helpful. And obviously, if you're traveling with a family member and there's an emergency, the family should be able to tell us that the individual uh, has diabetes. It may not be a bad idea to have some sort of identif identification, a wrist bracelet or a lanyard saying that you are a diabetic. Uh, do bring your glucose meter, a glucometer to have a good handle on how your sugars are running while you're there. Uh, anybody who has uh, insulin, uh, please talk to the group leader so some sort of arrangement can be made. This is really an issue during the monastic days. And, you know, some arrangements can be made, whether using some ice or just putting it in the refrigerator with clearly labeled uh, who it belongs to. Hypertension, a very common condition. Uh, you know, just want to make sure we, we if we have it, we control it. Um, you want to make sure that your blood pressures are well controlled back home. The added stress, traveling, <clears throat> change in diet, change in sleep, uh, exertion can increase and elevate the blood pressure. Uh, you know, for those of us who have a low salt diet should continue that. <clears throat> if you take a diuretic, you should probably continue that. But I would recommend talking to your primary care doctor. Maybe you can adjust it to the lowest possible dose so you don't have to excessively use the bathroom. Uh, asthma, COPD. Uh, once again, the dry desert air can trigger allergic symptoms. It can trigger an asthma attack. Uh, you know, these folks are at a high risk of getting an upper respiratory infection. So just be aware of it. Make sure you have your inhalers. Uh, even if it's like a simple asthma attack, minor exacerbation, don't take it lightly. Uh, you know, may want to be a bit more aggressive in how you treat it. I uh, would recommend wearing a face mask, specifically for those of us who have asthma COPD couple slides uh, in regards to our sister's uh, health. I won't talk much about, you know, pregnancy, but if there are sisters who are pregnant, I can't stress the importance of having a plan, talking to your OB uh, physician, and just being extra, extra cautious. Uh, pregnancy is a you know, a, a a medical condition which is very challenging under the best of situations. Now you are at Hajj. It's doable. Uh, almost every year we have Hujaj who are pregnant, uh, you know, early pregnancies. But just, just be extra, extra careful with your hydration needs <clears throat> as much as possible, avoiding crowded situations. And, you know, this is also something that you really want to talk to your uh, OB before leaving. Uh, for those of us uh, sisters who are, uh, you know, in the age of their cycles, I cannot stress this uh, enough. Please talk to your gynecologist now. Hopefully most of you have already addressed this. Birth control pills, uh, some sort of an oral contraceptive to delay uh, bleeding, to delay the cycle. Uh, plan for this now, please. Uh, every year, we'll get a message from a few sisters who 
for whatever reason, uh, you know, the dates were such that they were thinking they won't need anything. But stress can change the timing of the cycle. There's a lot of factors that go in. So I, I would just be very proactive and address this before heading to Saudi Arabia. Obviously, you know, a disclaimer, uh, these medications are contraindicated in certain conditions. And that's why it's very important you talk to your uh, gynecologist. Every year, uh, there are a few sisters who are on some sort of a birth control pill and they still uh, have some bleeding. There are medications uh, that can be utilized, but uh, what I do normally is I make sure I know who the gynecologist is in our Hujaj group. And Alhamdulillah, we have two or three uh, gynecologists traveling with us this year. So, you know, we'll, cons we'll consult them and try to see what can be done uh, if this happens. Um, children, just, you know, it's common sense. Uh, it's Hajj is challenging. If anybody is traveling with younger uh, kids, just keep it in mind. You know, if it's challenging for an adult, uh, it's more challenging for kids. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes just an overview on what to do from a medical perspective as far as the Hajj Manasik are concerned. You know, it's no brainer. Uh, Hajj is a daunting task, even for the ones who think are in fairly good shape and conditioning, it is challenging. So we still have 20 days. Please improve your stamina, improve your endurance, work on it. Trust me, this will pay um, immensely when you are at Hajj. When we go to Mina, before going to Arafah, get rest. When you go to Arafah in the morning, get rest. When you're at Muzdalafa, get your rest. Uh, Hajj is challenging. We're not sleeping enough. We haven't been sleeping enough for days before going to Hajj, um, you know, once we land in Saudi Arabia. So the more rested we can be for Hajj those days, the better we will be. Uh, eat light, eat right, and stay hydrated. Uh, overeating, uh, you know, makes us sleepy. We're not as uh, with it. Uh, it may impact our ibadah, our worship. And then, you know, the more you eat, the more chances you're going to be using or looking for a toilet. Whenever possible, the group guides, uh, group leaders uh, will recommend doing rituals in the less crowded hours as much as that possible, sun protection, and please stay in your groups. Don't venture out on your own. Tawaf Sai can be physically demanding. Uh, make sure you're rested. For those of us traveling Makkah first, make sure you get rest in the plane because you will be doing your Umrah as soon as you get to Makkah. Uh, so, you know, if you can be rested, the whole Umrah experience will be so much more pleasant. Uh, comfortable shoes, uh, once again, you know, clarify with your imam as far as uh, what brothers can wear, uh, but most sandals are acceptable. Stay hydrated, bring some sort of a snack. For the hujaj who may not be, you know, in the best of physical conditions, uh, elderly, chronic medical conditions, pregnant, um, or any other reason in which walking for hours in crowds is not uh, easy, wheelchairs are accessible, are available. You can pay somebody to push you around. Uh, they now have electric scooters that you can drive on your own. Uh, they have carts that are driven by uh, somebody else. So just discuss this with your group leader ahead of time. Uh, Mina, few pointers. As we all have seen pictures and can imagine, it's a tightly uh, crowded space. It's a tent city. Uh, even with AC and sprinkler irrigation, sometimes it does get very hot. Very important to keep that in mind. Just be aware that the buffet food, how long has been sitting out before we eat anything and everything. Uh, I really 
reduce my oral intake as far as solid food is concerned when I go to Mina. I take a lot of granola bars, protein bars, just to eat light, eat healthy, and get in the mindset for Deal Arafa. I try to rest as much as possible. Uh, obviously, stay hydrated. <clears throat> In Mina, alhamdulillah, the bathroom situation is, you know, is good. Uh, it's not an issue. So uh, staying hydrated should not be a concern. Uh, as far as being worried, you know, I would have to go to the bathroom uh, to use the toilet. So <clears throat> obviously, you know, in Mina, for serious medical conditions, there is a Saudi clinic, uh, kind of behind our uh, tent area. This is in uh, Majr al Kabj, where we do go every now and then for a serious medical condition, but we try to, you know, address as much as we can in in our tents. Deo Warafa, as you all all have heard, this is Hajj. Be as rested as possible for this day. Uh, don't eat too much, don't talk too much, get enough rest. So when it comes Zohar time, you are ready to go, uh, hit the ground running uh, from Zohar to Maghrib, inshallah. Uh, once again, similar pointers, eat light, stay hydrated. Bathrooms are not an issue there. Oh, well, one, one very important pointer. It's medically related. Please don't uh, leave our immediate Arafat uh, fenced area to go to Masjid Nimra. You will get lost. I guarantee you, you won't get a space inside the Masjid. And I guarantee you, you will get some sort of heat-related illness. All that area is Arafat. The scholars, the Imams, check with them, but they will tell you that it's totally fine to just pray in our tented area in Arafat you can pray outside your tent. You can make dua outside. When it gets too hot, you can come inside to take a few minutes break. Just use common sense. I know it's a very emotional day. Most of us have waited years, decades to, to get to Arafah. And that's why we want to make sure that we use common sense. Don't get overly emotional, overly zealous, and put ourselves in harm's way. Please don't venture out. Stay within the tented area in Arafa. <clears throat> the night at Mus the night at Muzdalifa uh, is time to rest. When we will be heading from Arafa to Muzdalifa, and then in the morning back to Mina, that is one of the most physically challenging, demanding phases of the journey. We may be waiting for hours uh, to get on the train. Uh, it will be crowded. It is hot. We have exhausted ourselves at the day of Arafat. So we're running low on fuel. So please try to rest uh, in Muzdalifa. Uh, once again, there are restrooms over there. Uh, people use them. I use them if I have to. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in Muzdalifa. Uh, so just, you know, have a good sense where you're at. Uh, Muzdalifa looks very similar no matter where you go. So just please stay with the group, stay with your loved ones. For the elderly, uh, anybody with chronic medical conditions, uh, there are concessions allowed. Check with your imam, your group leader. Uh, there will be folks and arrangements to leave Muzdalifa earlier around midnight or 1 a.m. to beat the rush, uh, which normally is an issue after Fajr. Jamarat, you know, we all have seen pictures and videos. It is crowded. Uh, we should go with our group leader. We should go as a group. Uh, Dar es Salaam, uh, the, you know, they do an amazing job in <clears throat> arranging for things like this, organizing for things like this. And we all will do, do this together with our group at a time in which it is as safe as possible. Uh, you know, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, those who have difficulty can designate 
Uh, but this is, you know, something that you should talk to your imam, inshallah. Uh, real quick, before we get to the question and answer section, just wanted to give an overview of how the medical team would be functioning. Uh, so, you know, as most of us, I'm sure we all know that we will be working out of two camps, uh, Majid al-Qabsh and al-Mu'asim. Uh, I will be in uh, Majid al-Qabsh and Dr. Amir will be in, in uh, al-Mu'asim. And we both will be leading teams of doctor volunteers who are going for Hajj. We have identified several doctors uh, in the groups who are traveling uh, for Hajj. Uh, I have texted several of you some of you have responded back in the coming days. I will be reaching out to you again and coming up with some sort of a plan guidance on how we'll be uh, kind of working the medical logistics. But, you know, rest assured, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Amir, Alhamdulillah, we've been with Dar es Salaam for many years now. We kind of know what to expect. Uh, we think we have a good handle on what to tell you what kind of advice to give uh, to 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 make it as safe and smooth as possible. And, uh, you know, we'll try to have a pleasant trip and we'll be there right with all of you. Uh, with that said, any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, address. And uh, just before I open the questions, just, you know, I may not be able to answer any specific questions related to your one type of medical condition just you know, understand that there are some limitations in this type of uh, Q&A session, but I'll try my best, inshallah. So uh, I started taking birth control pills. So I'm gonna politely uh, defer this to a uh, religious scholar uh, spotting on birth control pills, but I would also recommend that you uh, discuss with your gynecologist as well. Uh, yes, PCPs can prescribe antibiotics for a Hajj. Alhamdulillah, the day and age we live in, I'd be very surprised if a physician uh, in UK, Canada, Australia, US doesn't know what Hajj is and would you know, not be willing to prescribe it. No, I'm not recommending brothers to stop wearing underwear now to be prepared for ihram. Uh, you can if you want to. I personally don't do it. But I think if you just use some sort of Vaseline uh, petroleum jelly in ihram, you should be just fine, inshallah. Where can I, where can I get antibiotics from your primary care doctor? How can I make sure I'm eating right? You know, Sister Fatima, what I mean by this is not overindulging ourselves. Uh, the lesser we eat, uh, the better we eat. Uh, I think from a mindset perspective, we're better off and, you know, less used to use the bathroom. Our doctor is not prescribing antibiotics. What to do? Are they mandatory? I'm not going to say antibiotics are mandatory, but like I said earlier, you can't just walk into a pharmacy in Saudi and ask for an antibiotic. So I would recommend just call around and see uh, who can get you some antibiotics. There's no way that Dr. Amir and I can bring enough antibiotics for 3,000 odd hujaj. It's just impossible. So please, let's make our best effort to bring some. What kind of fever is most common in Saudi Arabia? Some sort of a viral illness, Motrin, Tylenol, to treat it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if most of us, most of the physicians in the US, at least that I know, have no problem filling out a prescription, even if you don't have any symptoms, it's understood you're traveling internationally. 
uh, immune bo immune boosting supplements, multivitamins, there's airborne products out there. Just consult with your local pharmacist. There's literally a million products out there. As long as it's gelatin free, it will do the trick. So to the best of my knowledge, COVID vaccine is not recommended from the Saudi perspective. Brother Ahmed, please correct me if I'm mistaken, but COVID vaccine is not required. No, it's uh, not, doctor. It isn't. Uh, do I recommend taking the COVID booster? You know, we're at a point, honestly, I would recommend, please talk to your primary care physician. They know your comorbid conditions. They know your age. You know, do you have diabetes? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have heart disease? All these factors play into the COVID vaccination recommendations now. So I would recommend talking to them. <clears throat> Okay, uh, there will be plenty of uh, water bottles available at all phases, uh, stages of the Hajj Manasik. But, you know, if you have a reusable water bottle that you can fill, nothing, no harm in there. I, you know, I would recommend you talk to your primary care doctor regarding Paxlovid. Uh, joint pain, I would recommend, you know, over-the-counter pain medications as long as you can take them. If your PCP won't prescribe anything but azithromycin, uh, you can sure talk to a travel clinic or look for a different primary care physician maybe. Once again, shingles vaccine has no direct relationship to Hajj, but, uh, you know, Talk to your primary care. It's recommended. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, gluten-free food will be challenging during the monastic days. Brother Ahmed, feel free to give your input. All the doctors. Yeah, it might be a little challenging, um, but there is, you know, there are there might be one or two dishes that will be available for them. Inshallah. Um. So any 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 over the counter antifungal cream is sufficient. Uh, the doctors will be available via WhatsApp. Your group leaders will uh, essentially connect you with all the physicians who will be available. Is using medical gloves recommended? I think it may be an overkill. Just having a hand sanitizer should be sufficient. The meningitis vaccine listed here uh, should be sufficient. As far as Ozempic, I don't know how you store it, but if it needs to be refrigerated, uh, there may be a possibility of doing it during the monastic days in the uh, coolers that we, we have for the drinks over there. <clears throat> Birth control spill for the first time. I would recommend please talk to your gynecologist. Uh, I, I say this with full respect, sincerity. Trust me, you want to address this now versus having an issue day before the monastic are starting. Uh, NyQuil is okay to go to Saudi Arabia. I don't know what this other supplement is there. Any vaccine card that the pharmacy gives is acceptable. There are refrigerators in the camps. Uh, nicotine patch allowed. I'm not sure what that question is. That might be probably a religious question, right, Sheikh, uh, doctor? I, I, I think so. Yeah. 
Uh, for people prone to get blisters, open sandals preferable to close shoes for long walk to Jamarat. I would just say wear socks and whatever shoes are comfortable. Socks will go a long way to prevent blisters versus not wearing socks. Uh, Sister Iman. You know, my 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 advice would be talk to your gynecologist that, you know, if you do have your cycle there, you are not able to perform Hajj. So I, I, I think that's how I would put it. Yeah, I think probably that's a question, uh, doctor, also that has to do, I, I think Dr. Haifat Yunus had a, a religious session for all sisters last night. So I will send, I will post the link in the chat again for everyone to watch. That's very important. She does cover those subjects for the sisters. I think it's more important to um, speak to her from a religious perspective. And I think Dr. Adil, just to be clear, so we can um, um, close that part of that question that's always consistent, subhanAllah, with the sisters, is that your recommendation and your guidance and your clear message with regards to those questions is the sisters need to speak to their OBGYN with regards to health wise and a religious guide for the, the religious part. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, I will go on further. If the sisters have not spoken to their OBGYN, they need to speak to them Monday. Um, Ducoral, I believe, is a vaccine for cholera that is not recommended or required for anybody traveling from uh, U.S., Canada, U.K., and Australia. I, Brother Ahmed, I think I have addressed everything unless I'm missing some questions. Um, I believe uh, we're pretty much covered because I kind of... Uh... Pause it. I think we're five minutes over. Alhamdulillah. I think we're we're in good shape, uh, Doctor. Jazakallah khair for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm sure everyone does. I opened the chat. If anyone wants to say salam to the doctor, uh, it's opened. Um, but Jazakallah khair for your time. I really appreciate it. It's uh, been very very informative. So may Allah bless you. This again is 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 recorded and we'll be posting it in the uh, playlist that we have. That you have all the sessions in. Inshallah. Uh, Doctor, whenever you like, we can end it, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Wa alaykum, brother Ahmed. Inshallah, see you in Saudi soon. Assalamu alaykum. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. And you will be also in the session tomorrow in Frisco. Is that correct? Is that Absolutely. tomorrow or is that a Sunday? No, no, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. I'll be there with breakfast, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Perfect. So if anyone is going to be in, in, in Dallas uh, area, uh, Dr. Adil will be there uh, in the Frisco session with Hidayah Institute with Dr. Uh, with Sheikh Fazl Bari. May Allah bless you all. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.